philanthropy. Let's right. try to do something to bring Wonder Woman 84 to a merciful end. Is that possible? We're doing what we can. Uh, we are gathered here together to Not unite Al Gadot. I have to and touch demand it. better movies from our live streaming platforms um, to do something about Wonder Woman 1984. And I guess one way we can do that is by starting the Wicked Awesome theme song. Potentially a couple hazy graphics. A little zoom zimmy zam. Live on YouTube with our webcams. It, if it's Monday night, you might be watching what happens to be the greatest open mic comedy show that's ever happened on a Monday night in December on the 28th in the year 2020. So ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Possibly the funniest comedy show host in the world, Mr. Mike Langworthy. Yeah, I suppose it is possible and, you know, and, that, and thank you, thank you, Jeff and, and others, I'm sure as well. Bruce Lipsky um, coming into us from New York State, the state of New York. If it's, uh, Although people don't really where he lives, they don't really call it New York State. New York State, I think, is where um, uh, Ed Smythe lives, up in the Catskills. I think he lives up in the Catskills. Hey, that's yes. fascinating, isn't it? For those of you who are here for the first time. You are correct, sir. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, hit, a knit, and a mint. Right. <laughs> As long as you move your cat. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I, I guess we're already distracted right. from our own show. <laughs> so uh, I try to bring back uh, 20, 29 year old references to talk shows that have gone, that are longer dead than some of the participants on this mic tonight. <laughs> that I do. Um, it's kind of my thing, Mike. Is that kind of your thing? Hey, Ned Ryan. Good to see you and that close again. Um, Always. What? The, what I say is I try to bring back old references whenever I can. That's all I'm saying. Um, yes. Um, let me just say, this is, how, this is how it's gonna work tonight. For those of you who are new or, or who are returning after uh, a considerable absence, uh, we do five minute spots. I usually do a little time up front, but I'm using that time to explain to the new people how we do things. I have a timer, and I'm not just bragging. I have a timer that uh, goes off after four minutes, and everybody should be able to hear it, and they have a minute to wrap up. Uh, they don't have to use that whole minute. If they use more than that minute, I'm going to be a little bit pissed off and probably interrupt you. Uh, I sometimes interrupt while comics are on the camera uh, just because I feel like it, it's my mic and I'm not getting paid, so fuck you. And um, another thing is that I will be posting a couple of comics ahead in the public chat. So keep your eye on the public chat. And um, excuse me, um, I have a condition in which I breathe, too, according to which I breathe too, too uh, shallowly. And because I live in a place that's a mile above sea level, I yawn a lot. It doesn't mean I'm bored with your set. It means I'm not <laughs> getting oxygen and I have to take a big gulp of air to breathe. It does not mean that I am not bored with your set, however. It's really a value neutral oh. I'm going to <laughs> yawn regardless. Um, if anyone has a specific way they want to be introduced, they should type it into, uh, you can either type it to me privately if they don't want other people to know, or they can just put it in under everyone in the chat. Um, the show is produced by Chuck Roy, who's also a fine, fine comic. I call, uh, him, I call him a fine young comic, but I don't lie to my audiences. Right, yeah, no, I'm 50. Yeah. Are you really? 48. Well, yeah, you're Still a motherfucker. Yeah, I know. You're, you're, uh, you're funny. You can reach up and punch 50 right in the nose. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You certainly could. Um, 
he could hold 50 by the back of the neck and punch it in the face so it couldn't get away. That's how close. If he was that kind of guy. That's how we <laughs> well, he is. He is that, believe me, he's that kind of guy. Stop it. He's that way, if you understand my drift. Um, so uh, anybody who has very particular uh, needs or wants for an introduction, please let me know. Excuse me. You see, I'm yawning again. Got it. Um, for those of you who got here uh, since I first said it, um, tonight we'll be trying to raise a little bit of money for... Um, um, a charity that I support called Magic Moments that I'll talk about later in the show and for Elevating Connections. Anybody who's here, who's been here for an apocalypse knows about Elevating Connections, reconnecting siblings separated by the foster care system from each other. And um, we'll be plugging the show that Chuck and I do together on Sunday nights called Apocalypse Comedy Show. We'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, usually do some jokes but tonight I just want to take a moment of silence for um, Wonder Woman 84, because. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently she has a magical rope that she uses to keep people in the theaters. Uh, well, <laughs> it's magic. Um, <laughs> willing and willing. No, too willing soon? Won't work. That's okay. all I can say. I saw it. Um, uh, I watched it. And I'm not at the point in my life where I can say, hey, that's two hours of my life I won't get back and just think of it as nothing. <laughs> it's actually a measurable um, uh, amount of time in what I have left. In fact, I, when I'm on stage, and, I, and I'm on stage sometimes with actual people there, you may remember that from years ago. And when I, <laughs> how much, when I ask how much time do I have when I'm on stage, I'm usually... Uh, asking for some uh, metaphysical answer, not just right. one that we left in my set. So I can say five minute sets, a buzzer that happens or a bing thing that happens at four minutes. Um, uh, man, I mean, I like Gal Gadot, the actress. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't hate Chris Pine, the actress. But Gal Gadot, the person, and whatever her name is, Wonder Woman. I can't remember what her, Hippolyta? I don't know, whatever her name is. Linda Carter. No, it's not Linda Carter. <laughs> Are you sure? Valeria Baldwin. Ah, that's, that's her American, super identity. That's her anglicized name, but I'm talking about her Greek on the island name. She's got a special name. And uh, Zorba. Themyscira. You know what? Themyscira, Themyscira or Paradise Island. Yes. Yeah, so mascara. Okay. <laughs> How about if we just do this? Let's make a ground rule, all right? When I say I don't know something, don't assume that means I would like you to tell me. <laughs> oh. That'll just be a ground rule. I'm just assuming that I don't know her name. What I'm trying to say like I know is, why you said that. What I'm trying to say, you know what? Also, it's not a sort of riddle quest, Ned. <laughs> 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 I feel like it. I don't know why you said that. <laughs> I don't care. You don't know why I said it. I thought there were prizes. Uh, no, there's not. There's no prizes. And you absolutely should not be a stranger to hearing the phrase, you're no prize. <laughs> what I'm trying to say uh, you sounded just is like that I, can, I don't think Gal Gadot, the person, or the character that she plays in the movie, would look at Chris Pine and say, in any form, that is the love of my life. That's, he doesn't have the stature. He's not a good enough actor. He doesn't have enough charisma to be the guy that would be the love of an Amazon goddess's life. Best case scenario, Chris Pine is the guy that she fucks in the backseat of a cab after a drunken night out with her girlfriends. Best case scenario, he's that. But give up. Give sort up. of a rebound guy. Give up and not a, not a rebound guy. And again, you're second guessing what I'm saying. And if you just shut the fuck up and listen, then like that'll happen. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, I wonder about the people who are here for the first time. Going, who's this Ned guy? <laughs> no, I think they're saying who's this Mike guy. Are but it's they okay. really? Is that it's funny? fine? 
That is just great what you said there. You sure got me, man. Ouch. Um, all right. So anyway, he's not the guy that should be the love interest in the show. And uh, the guy who's the bad guy in the show, you want a bad guy who's got a lot of gravitas. This is a guy who looks like he should be taking day trips out for swordfish out of Santiago Harbor. That's what he should be doing instead of trying to rule the world. He doesn't have the chops for it. And it's obvious the first time you see it. And I think we should just draw a veil over Kristen Wiig's uh, part in the show. Oh, yeah. Kristen, Kristen Wiig, is, she's pretty wonderful on Saturday Night Live often. But Lauren Michaels was smart when he started graduating people out of SNL into the movies. He gave them small parts first, you know? Mm -hmm. Kristen Wiig should be... She should have been six, eight movies as a parking attendant that gets knocked over by the star. And just said, hey, these are my good pants. You know, and do that. <laughs> six, six or eight movies. And then get maybe a bigger role. Um, she was really not ready to try and convince the movie going public that there's a universe in which she could be a PhD in archaeology. It's just one person's opinion. It happens to be right. But it's just one person's opinion. All right. So that's all I have what i'm sorry Who's, whose opinion is that it's mine it, it, it's your own oh okay that's cool yeah yeah that's one way to go funny it's funny that for somebody who grasps so little of what's going on around him you sure as fuck act a lot of crap um, <laughs> i'm just saying you sure talk a lot for slow. because it's i mean i'm a mean-spirited small-minded petty person that's what <laughs> yeah. i'm saying all right, anyway, I don't even know who's here yet, for to be honest with you. Um, I should look at the participants first. Uh, oh, hey, you know what? I'm going to bring you up, Jeff. Jeff, hey, you're, right. you're going to be the first guy because you're the guy who I haven't seen in the longest time um, performing on a stage. So um, it's a guy who used to perform in a lot of the same mics that I performed at back when people were allowed to leave their homes. That's your lean forward for emphasis. Um, uh, and uh, I've always liked him, and I think you guys will too. So, big round of applause, Jeff Cohen, ladies and gentlemen. Jeff Cohen. Hey, all right. <laughs> Thanks. Hey. Thanks, everybody. Um, yes, uh, my name is Jeff Cohen. Uh, the ladies call me Traffic Cohen because uh, they're always swerving to avoid me. <laughs> <laughs> And when they do plow me, they deny it ever happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, but um, despite all that, I, um, I actually, I've hooked up with a scarily high amount of women, uh, thanks to Craigslist uh, and meth. <laughs> um, believe it or not, that works. I, uh, I, and for someone who doesn't do any kind of drug at all, well, I take that back. I went to my doctor recently. Um, he prescribed me Adderall to give me clarity. Um, and it's clear I love Adderall. Uh, <laughs> I also went on a speed date and she snorted all of it. Okay, that's that joke stepped on the other one, but sometimes that gets a laugh. Um, no, but I, I don't do, like, I get, like, super paranoid on, like, any amount of drug or weed. Um, I took a baby hit the other night, uh, got so high and so paranoid that um, I ordered Rosetta Stone Spanish because I thought my neighbors were talking shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> and after like two weeks of taking the class, turns out they were. <laughs> um, <laughs> here's how high I was though. Um, it was in English the whole time. So I, you know. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, switching gears, I, I grew up very religious. They're very anti-drug uh, most of the time, <laughs> except certain cults. Um, uh, actually, yes, I was in a cult, um, or as some people would call it, uh, just me and some guy in his basement. <laughs> he, he was pretty religious, though. Um, no, no, but for real, my, my church had a very, uh, very strict policy about no sex before marriage um well except for that guy <laughs> in the basement yeah he was always trying with me um but i was like uh, uh, uh not until you put a ring on it well he did <laughs> uh it was a cock ring um oh no so we're <laughs> yeah anyway uh let's see uh actually i was on my church's chess team 
which was horrible because uh, I was constantly getting taken by the bishop. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. I grew up uh, religious and I, I don't know, I, I kind of got over it, but I'm still, you know, sort of vestigially Christian. I went on that Christian dating site, um, Mormons Are Us, <laughs> or whatever they call I'm just looking for the most amount of matches I can. And with Mormons, uh, what do you get, like 17 at a time or something like that? Um, that was, it was weird because I, I read that um, in the Book of Mormon, if you're a lady, it, it's pretty rough on you. You can't get into heaven um, if your husband forgets your name. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so bye, ladies, whatever your names are. <laughs> Um, all right, enough religion crap. I don't know. I, uh, <laughs> I don't choose the right women though. Usually, um, like my last girlfriend, uh, just had a ton of screaming red flags. Um, I mean, kids. <clears throat> um, yeah. Her, her oldest son, real piece of shit. I mean, <laughs> he was, he was always like, I don't need to do what you say. You're not my dad. I'm like, yeah, I know idiot. You and I went to high school together. <laughs> um but i don't know i i just have i have a lot of issues mike uh mentioned orphans i'm actually an adoptee um where are my fellow adoptees at okay just me <laughs> again <laughs> um but no being an adoptee uh it affects my dating life because i have you know those abandonment issues um, I was out with this young lady the other night, and she totally reminded me of my biological mother because <clears throat> I knew I wouldn't be going home with her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, found my dad, though. I found my biological father on that a ancestry uh, dot com thing, and uh, turns out he's in jail for three counts of three counts of armed robbery, uh, which is <laughs> pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, what a badass, you know, like my, the stepdad I grew up with total pussy. <laughs> the only thing that guy ever did was get robbed three times. <laughs> I can't see any time oh. indicator. On, uh, am I closer? Oh yeah, you're close. Um, I, uh, the, the binger, the binger went off, but I forgot you have a, like a hearing thing, right? Don't you? A little bit. Yeah. Um, it so only what, takes, it only takes a but, little bit. Do another do I have room for like one closing thing here. One closing you remark. You do have enough room for that. Okay, gotcha. Here we go. So anyway, so I'm telling these adoption jokes and uh, at a show before the shutdown, and for real, this woman comes up to me after the show, and she's like, uh, you know, I just wanted to tell you, um, I was very offended uh, by your adoption material. I'm an adoptive mother myself, and uh, I, I just think it's in really bad taste. I mean, I, I just felt the need to come up here and tell you that I, I just think you're a real piece of shit. <laughs> you know, and I hope you're proud of yourself. And I was like, mom? <laughs> <laughs> All right, that'll be my uh, closing joke. And you guys have been great. I've been Jeff Cohen. Thanks. Jeff Cohen. Thanks, yeah. Jeff. Thank you. How Yay. do I? Uh... Yay. Jeff Cohen has uh, many talents. He's a painter of some note. He showed me some of his pictures online, and you should look them up. What's the... Uh, where can they see your stuff, Jeff? Oh, um, it, on my Facebook page. So it's J-E-F-F-K-O-E-H-N. Uh, also Instagram. And that is, uh, let me tell you in one second. Mm -hmm. My Instagram handle is K-O-E-H-N dot J-E-F-F. -F. Awesome. Okay. So there and buy, some, buy my work. <laughs> yes, buy his work. Um, uh, speaking of purchases, we want to make sure we say thanks to the folks who bought tickets, including Rob, Cynthia, and Carol. Um, and Cynthia and Rob, thanks for your patience. I guess we got you on board here a little late, so uh, my, my apologies. Um, but we've got a whole bunch of great comedians and a super talented host, Mike Langworthy, for you. So um, let's bring it back to Mike Langworthy and more comedians. Thank you. Isn't it great the way we just tag team it like that? It's unbelievable. Um, we could be like WWF partners. Um, yes. I, I, I have a feeling that we'd have different um, fantasy end products of the rest. Right. Uh, I, I still want to wear the tights. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, so, well, there, there's a difference between us right there. Um, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I know this guy has been here before, and I really like what he did. I don't remember if he wanted me to use his initial, but I'm going to because I'm not sure. And I'd rather use one, many letters than one too few. Please welcome C. Glenn Williams. All right. Glenn Thank Glenn you. Glenn. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I have been... I've been stuck inside for uh, about as long as everybody else here has been stuck inside. And it's driving me nuts. Uh, I don't, I know you can only see me from like the shoulders up, but I used to be like an athletic guy. I really enjoyed running, but every time I leave my apartment these days, it seems like I'm surrounded by parents who like to tell their kids, you don't have to wear a mask. And why don't you run up to that nice man over there and cough on him? Uh, <laughs> but I, I loved running. And every time I say that, I know people get worried. Don't worry. I'm not going to spend five minutes talking about my shoes. Uh, I, I mean, we're doing Zoom comedy here. I'm not even wearing pants right now. <laughs> you, you guys are lucky I put on a shirt for this show. <laughs> We're at that stage currently, but, uh, but when I started running, I had sort of a guardian angel. I have a friend named Spooky and Spooky, uh, was Spooky runs marathons like competitively and was like, Hey, you're running now. Would you like advice on how to train for running? And I said, absolutely. I'll take whatever help I can get. And she told me, well, you know, you got to train up your legs. So you run in the shallow end of a pool. Okay, cool, whatever. I'm, I'm game. And then she was like, and you train barefoot because uh, if you're wearing sneakers, the soles of the sneakers can make it likely you're going to injure your ankle. And I'm like, well, I never would have thought of that. And then, oh, and she, uh, she told me that when you run a marathon, you need to put band-aids over your nipples so that when you get to the finish line and you rip your shirt off, the police don't arrest you for indecent exposure, <laughs> which I would never in a million years have thought of that. Um, I had to start running because my previous exercise, I actually trained to be a boxer. And I say, I trained to be a boxer instead of saying I was a boxer because I quit when I got to the point that it was like, well, you better get in the ring or why the hell are you even here? And I quit because all of these people were like, you should not get into the ring. It is not healthy for someone to get in the ring when they've lost that many matches with the punching bag. <laughs> and I told them I could have taken that motherfucker except his friend the floor kept sneaking up behind me <laughs> I there are probably some people listening right now who like to engage in some kind of exercise or sport or something and always do the smart thing like go to classes and watch YouTube videos and read articles and practice and I have a semi-suicidal approach toward any kind of sport in that I am the guy who will sit on the couch for three weeks and then call my friend and be like I just bought a flying squirrel suit on eBay let's climb to the top of a mountain strap GoPros to our head and jump off and see what happens uh, my wife back when we were dating asked me if I would like to go canoeing with her because she really loves canoeing. And I was like, absolutely 100%. I cannot think of anything in this world I would rather do. I can't swim. <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have said that last part out loud. Uh, oh. be before the third time, the canoe tipped over. Um. I just remember struggling to get back into the canoe and she was sitting there saying, I don't understand why you're panicking. It's just water. You can swim for the shore. And I said, probably because I can't swim. And there was this long silence. And she said, 
why the hell would you even step into a canoe if you can't swim? And I said, well, I spoke to a lot of my friends and they said, oh, don't worry about it. Canoeing is the perfect sport for people who can't swim. The whole point is to stay inside the canoe. <laughs> and there was this second long pause. And then very quietly, I just heard, which one of your dumbass friends told you that? <laughs> Fucking spooky, man. Anyway, thank you very much. It's wonderful being here. And thanks so much for letting me uh, talk to you Yay. guys for a while. <laughs> Yay. I got to tell you, Spooky doesn't give the best advice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not I, saying, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah, you know, I I just can't stop listening it, to it, though. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, advice is kind of spooky with a spooky little girl like her. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Classic horror uh -oh. reference. Classic horror. Little fallback to an, a simpler time, ladies and gentlemen, a simpler time when some of us were young and most of us weren't born. <laughs> That's neither here nor there, though. Anyway, that was uh, C. Glenn. And uh, I think you should uh, give him a round of applause one more time for coming in and explaining hey. to us what it's like to have a homicidal advice giver when you're running. <laughs> and uh, canoeing enthusiast. Anyway, now, um, lots more show to come. Our next performer is, I believe, from Canada. Isn't that, well, he'll tell us, he'll tell us. Yep. He also hosts another mic called No Line to Cross Comedy. It's on Sundays, uh, and it's starting on January 10th. It'll be on Zoom. I hope it's not at seven o'clock uh, mountain time because that's when Apocalypse is on and uh, Chuck and I will be doing a show. However, if it is, there's plenty of room in the comedy world for everybody who wants to do it. So check out his thing, No Line to Cross Comedy on Sundays on Zoom. And I'm sure that somewhere on Facebook, you'll be able to find out where that is. Um, so please welcome uh, Jerry Hodges, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I hope it's Jerry, it's not Gary, is it, or is it? Yeah, it's Jerry. All right, good. Thank you. Uh, so I uh, don't know if you can tell already, but I am the white sheep in my family. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, if, if being black or acting black was measured on a scale, I'd fall somewhere right around here between Taylor Swift and a beaver scout. <laughs> uh, so, so we are almost done 2020. 2020, or what I like to call God's year off. Uh -huh. I mean, if you think about this, if, if you think about this logically, you've been, if you're God, okay, you've been spending over 2,000 years hearing people's prayers, personal problems, listening to Trump's speeches. Huh. Wouldn't uh -huh. you need a smoke break too? <laughs> I mean, they, yeah, he's listening to th th these prayers and it's like, God, please help me. My village was hit by the tsunami to this one. God, I know it's my first night, but please don't give me the bottom bunk. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think what God actually did was he, God wanted to take a break, so he just snuck down to earth, peeked in, and just went, hey, China, cover for me, would you? <laughs> and that's how we got the COVID. <laughs> but with uh, the COVID virus, it, it canceled a lot of things this year that I was looking forward to. It canceled St. Patrick's Day. It canceled Gay Pride Week. It canceled the Olympics. Not that I really care about the Olympics, but it canceled Gay Pride Week for me. I need Gay Pride Week in my life because it's those seven days out of the year I'm being fuckable. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's the thing too. I, I'm not gay myself. I just prefer to celebrate Gay Pride Week over Black History Month because I'm not marching for shit in February. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh, yeah, one of my old jobs, I told my boss I worked at a gay club, and he's being a smart ass. He's like, really? <laughs> hey, do gay guys tip well? I looked at him and I said, define tip. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I so the Olympics were canceled. Uh, I took some time to reflect on that because uh, I realized something. See, almost every demographic in the world have a has a sporting event just for them. Uh, people with physical dis physical or mental disabilities have the Special Olympics or the uh, Paralympics. 
able-bodied people. We got summer, winter Olympics, World Series, Stanley Cup. Uh, drug addicts have the X Games. Mm -hmm. uh, women have the WNBA. And the gay community <laughs> has the Super Bowl halftime show. Mm. I did find one demographic where there's absolutely no sporting event for them. I think it's good. I'm going to run it by you guys. Ready? The mental health games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We could start off with a 100 yard ADD dash. Yeah. The, it, it's, the track is just 100 yards of bubble wrap and duct tape and tinfoil just going along. You're going to be playing <laughs> with that. That's a three day event right there. Uh -huh. We could have weightlifting for sex addicts. Yeah, they lift weights, just not with their arms. <laughs> and if you're sitting in the first three rows, you will get pregnant. Oh my. Uh, we could have the we could have racist chess. No, there's no actual chess being played. It's just two Trump supporters arguing over who has to be black. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> in the next round, old white man versus older white man. And the winner plays Kanye West. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can have uh, the bi we can have the bipolar biathlon. Yeah, there's no time being taken. We just keep going until one emo kid hasn't shot themselves. Uh, yeah, I wanted to go dark there. Uh, how much time do I have left? You have exactly one minute. minute. One minute. Okay. Okay, so uh, because this is based in Colorado, can I assume every, a lot of people here are football fans? Sure. Woo. Football fans? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so the Washington Redskins no longer exist because the team name Redskins reflect racism and it's degrading towards people of First Nations. See, this is the first time something like this has happened with a sports team. Uh, years ago, there was a basketball team called the Washington Bullets in the NBA, but the league forced them to change their name because – Bullets reflect negativity and violence. So for the past 25 years, the team has been known as the Washington Wizards. <laughs> okay, let me see if I got this. Uh, Redskins is racist and degrading. Bullets are negative and violent. Are you saying it's okay to take a professional basketball team, predominantly full of black people, and name them after the leader of the KKK? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, it, it, gonna keep going with that. Let's go to Major League Baseball. Coming to the field, the Washington White Nationalists. Let's give it up for them. <laughs> yeah, well, let's go a little bit further. Let's go down south and name that NHL team the Florida Black Panthers while you're at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, they won't be any better, but at least it'll be easy to see them on the ice. Uh, <laughs> That's it for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It depends on the uniform, uh, but anyway, that's uh, the Washington Wizards. Yeah, I never thought of that until you brought that up, the Washington Wizards. I always pitched that when they had to change their names, they should uh, take a page out of Prince's book and call themselves the Washington team, formerly known as the Redskins. <laughs> then you, you, you comply, but you thumb your nose at authority at the same time. Why do I pitch for one? Because I'm I don't give a fuck, man. I'm a rebel. All right. Anyway. Woo. UNLV? No, no, no. Okay. They're no, the no, rebels, no, but, it's, but welcome to shit Ned knows at uh That'll be a short show. Yeah. <laughs> See what happened? See what happened? I mean, well, you went in a different way with it. I thought you were gonna uh do stuff that wasn't about your dick. <laughs> See what I mean? Wait, <laughs> wait. That's short, and I just well, that can't be true. That can't be true. No, I'm sure it's not. Well, I don't know. I, I've never looked. Um, I can't look. It's right behind my back. Anyway, you know what? I don't know. I went in directions that I really didn't even want to go. I don't. I don't like doing. I don't like working blue. You're young. You're bright. Why do you work blue? <laughs> <laughs> Comics who swear a lot can just, you know, go fuck themselves. That's what I say. <laughs> oh, God. Back in the olden days. Hey, when you get good at or get away with shit like that, huh? Uh, I used to use children as stools. Um, I'm just saying I'm, I've been around a long time. 
Um, so uh, our next performer. <clears throat> you know, I get into these things and I just start thinking of bits that I want to do. And I'll just here for 10 seconds trying to come up with a joke in the middle of a show. That's known as dead air in the radio business. That's why I like Zoom, because there's no dead air. You can still see my face with my eyes rolling back in my head. Our next performer, speaking of people, um, comes to us from not Denver. And um, I really like the way she does comedy. And I think you will, too. Her name is Jessica Misra. And please clap for her. Clap a lot for her. Yay. Not a lot of us, but we can be loud. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, I love the visual of Mike doing stand up on stage with the three year old next to him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the three year old's the stool. You guys got it. You like the captain, the captain Morgan barrel. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, it is cold in my apartment. That's why I had to wear this jacket. Um, I would like to call this jacket Young Mom Goes Camping. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, guys, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm super happy to be here, but I'm kind of having a bad day. I just found out I'm a huge dork. <laughs> yeah, I know. I always thought I was kind of edgy. I thought I was like alternative. Um, turns out I'm a loser. Who knew? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always thought because I did what? <laughs> the best. We would have helped you. <laughs> Mike is like in my DMs, like you are confirmed believer. <laughs> but guys, I always thought I was cool because I didn't follow my parents' rules, you know? But like their rules were be home by 9 30, and rebels don't go home at 10. <laughs> <laughs> It, I, th I think it's their fault that I'm not cool because, um, you know, like parents, like, you know, you get everything from your parents. Like the only reason some people drink whiskey and listen to Pearl Jam is their dad did it, right? It's not my <laughs> fault that my mom drank Bailey's and listened to the little drummer boy. <laughs> <laughs> not even a Christmas thing, by the way. Just <laughs> just Tuesday at the Miser House. Year round? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man, it's the worst Christmas song. And I stand by that. I don't care who I offend. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if you didn't want raunchy comedy, you shouldn't have come to this. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. You don't care who you offend, huh? <laughs> I just, I put it all on Twitter, baby. <laughs> come, they told me. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, my, uh, I used to be a Catholic. Um, now my religion is self-care, you know? Mm. Yeah, so yeah, I, I go, thank you. Yeah, I go into the confessional of self-care. And I go, bless me, Gwyneth Paltrow, for I've sinned. <laughs> <laughs> it's been four years since my last journaling session, and I plan to never continue again. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I am from Chicago. I don't know. I don't. I think Mike just said not Denver, <laughs> but I, I, I'm Chicago. Uh, and I watched the new Bulls documentary. Did anyone? '90s Bulls. Very exciting. Right? Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. I, I think Michael Jordan might be the only man in America. Hell yeah, I got the Rob. I got the thumbs up from Rob. That's all I needed today. Um, <laughs> I think Michael Jordan might be the only man in America that knows what it's like to feel like a pregnant woman. You know? Because after the game, he puts his, like another man puts his arm around him and he's like, wow, we did it. And it's like, no, I did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> You know, like people are touching his head after a basketball game, like he's a pregnant woman waiting for the bus. Like, give me a little piece of that action. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not bald, so that fucks up my do. Um, <laughs> I uh, I love. How am I doing? Okay, good. Uh, I love uh, I love YouTubers. I got all my advice from YouTubers. Um, but you know what I realized? YouTubers' advice is just stand up bits. You know. Like one of my favorite YouTubers was like, birth control makes women crazy. <laughs> and you know, there's a standup that's had that bit since the nineties and they're rolling their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this bitch has a headlining set before me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has not been a popular bit, but I'm gonna try it anyway. Um, whether you agree with it or not, Trump's presidency is historic. It's, it's like the Chicago fire. It, it happened, we all remember. It wasn't positive, it's just in the books. Um, huh. And uh, I, I really think that when my kids are gonna ask me what it's like living during this time, I'm gonna look them in the eye and I'm gonna be like, I have no idea what was happening. I turned off, <laughs> I deleted all my news apps. I didn't wanna know, it was emotionally draining. 
I gave up. Um, <laughs> that is for me and Gen Zers. And um, yeah. I will put them all on TikTok <laughs> later. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's my that's been my time. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank you. Jessica Misra, ladies and gentlemen. So what is a, if you light a candle to St. Gwyneth, what does it smell like? I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> just curious that's all i'm saying man that's all i'm saying uh chuck you had something that you wanted to say to the people and i think it's a great idea for the show so why oh yeah i just want to welcome the new customers and such uh, i know some of the people who bought tickets are new to the show and arrived a little late you're welcome to turn your microphone on or your camera on if that helps you enjoy the show better you can keep your microphone off and camera off if that's going to disturb the show. So, but uh, if you'd like the comedians to hear you laugh, you're welcome to turn your camera on and such. And we love to see your smiling and laughing faces. So you would think that that was the precursor to a really nice, wonderful thing that I'm saying, but it's not. We love to see your smiling and laughing faces. So if you are going to turn on your camera, for fuck's sake, laugh. Um, that could be wrong. You know, I could be making enemies here when I say that, but I probably am. Um, I'm off tonight. That's all I can say. I'm off. Uh, I think it's something to do with seeing Wonder Woman 84. And um, I just, <laughs> something, something happened there that I, I, I may never live down. Um, although I did see Soul. If you haven't seen Soul, see that movie. What's um, it about? It's... I'm not even going to dignify that with a response. <laughs> about the bottom of shoes, Ned. That's what it's about. <laughs> you know, it's the sequel to Heal. Okay. Okay. So we're going angry tonight. That's good. The trilogy. The third part is called Uppers. Uh-huh. <laughs> so this is a bit now, Mike, right? It's not just a, it's a hunk, really. Well, it's a series turning, of jokes on a particular topic. Yeah, it's turning into a hunk. It's absolutely turning into a hunk. And the fourth movie will be Boots. And uh, <laughs> the fifth movie will be Saddles, and then we'll move into a whole horse-themed series of movies. I'm, I would have closed with Boots, but okay. Ugh, it's just like Marvel all over again. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just the whole Marvel universe all done a completely different way. <clears throat> Ned, would have closed, Ned would have closed with um, Boots. And that really encourages me to go farther with the bit because I've seen. <laughs> I've seen the way Only I understood your words. Yeah, I would have. I would have closed with boots. Yeah, well, that's some of the career. That's some of the career decisions that uh, has gotten yep. that far in his life so far. That anyway, like get the, see again with the hostile, the hateful things. Why do I say a thing like that? Why? Why would I do that? Because I'm a weak, bad person, um, and I don't say that like it's a negative thing. Anyway, our next performer is um, somebody who comes to us from another part of the uh, nation as well. Um, we have a, more than just a nation. We have one guy who come to us from another part of the hemisphere already. This guy comes from the central part of the state. You live in um, suburban St. Louis, do you not? I do. I do. Yeah. Suburban St. Louis. I, it could be so the suburbs could be actually right in St. Louis. I don't know. I guess since you said the suburbs, probably the suburbs. Anyway, please welcome Yale Hollander. Yale Hollander. Hey, thank yeah, you so come much, on. Mike. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate it. Um, Got to give a shout out to whatever the hell is going on in Jerry Hodges' kitchen back there. I see like three industrial sized bottles of jug mm -hmm. wine back there. I don't, yeah. I don't know if he's got <laughs> Paul Masson and the Gallo brothers kidnapped in his kitchen or if he's hosting my wife's book club tomorrow night. Um, I, saw in the, uh, I saw in the chat that Bruce Lipsky's coming up after me. It's very nice for Mike to put both of the Jews back to back so people can wonder, you know, which one's Benet and which one's Brith. Um, I'll, let you, I'll let you figure that one out. Defend each other. <laughs> so, but thanks to everybody for coming out tonight. I know that uh, most of you uh, have probably been pretty preoccupied this week trying to figure out all the places where you're going to spend your $600 in stimulus cash. Um, <laughs> fortunately, you know, we have television commercials to help guide our way. So right now uh, I'm leaning towards, you know, buying a couple of oversized GMC vehicles and uh, 
parking them in front of the house and then uh, letting my wife surprise me by picking the pickup truck over the uh, suburban grocery getter. Um, that's not even the stupidest commercial that's on the air right now. I, I know that one is, is irritating, but for my lack of money, the, the more irritating one is the Fidelity Investments commercial. This is the one with the two aging boomers uh, who go and sit down with their investment advisor and say, yeah, we, you know, we've got a change in plans. We want to gear our investment towards uh, paying for our uh, daughter's kids. She's having twins. We're going to pay for their college. And then as they're walking outside, they notice, you know, a multi-million dollar condominium and they decide, oh, well, you know what, we'd be real close to the, we'd be real close to the twins if we buy this. And then they go back to the Fidelity office. Now, what I want to know is, does that mean that the kids aren't getting a college education or does, are they trying to, you know, somehow put the heavy on this investment advisor to pull some big short shit and somehow or another come up with another couple of million dollars in the you know, I guess six months until those kids are born so they can move into the condo. It's just, it's, it's very irritating and out of touch. And at this point in time, I'm really just ranting. There's no punchline to this. Um, <laughs> we are, of course, this week in uh, what I like to call the taint of the year. Um, we kissed <laughs> away Christmas and uh, we're getting ready to take a hot steaming shit on 2020 as we go into the new year. Um, because we've been in quarantine for as long as we have, um, my biggest adventures of the year have been in the supermarket. So I've spent a lot of time noticing what's going on in the supermarket. And this is the week where they just kind of say, fuck it, as far as what's going on in the front of the store. Because usually, you know, that's where they get you with the seasonal items, you know, like from July 5th until October 31st, you know, it's all Halloween. And then after that, you know, they they seg immediately into Christmas. But then there's like this dead period. And then, you know, in January, it's all kale and slim fast and water because everybody, you know, is making those New Year's resolutions. But you know that we're all fatigued by that bullshit as we get closer to Super Bowl. So by the end of January, the stores are like, fuck it. Here's a football stadium made out of salami and the field is <laughs> made of of guacamole and, and, and cheese dip. Fuck it. You weren't going to keep that resolution anyway, but this week it's just like, I don't fuck it. Crackers have some crackers. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's all that's left in the front of the store mm -hmm. right now is, is crackers. So uh, whatever, as far as that goes, Hey, Donald Trump, lost Pat Robertson last week. Pat Robertson said it's time for Trump to give up on thinking he won the election, that Trump lives in an alternate reality. Pat Robertson said that. A yeah. guy who said that 9-11 was caused by the ACLU. A guy that said that Hurricane Katrina was the result of God punishing us for homosexuality and abortion. Pat Robertson, the guy who said that God spoke to him in a vision and told him in 2006 that Seattle was going to be buried by a tsunami. This is the man who thinks that Donald Trump has lost his grip. And maybe he has. I don't know. Trump has, has alluded to the fact that if he does have to give up the ghost on the election, he's going to have a counter inauguration the same day as the inauguration. And 300,000 people are going to show up for that. That would be 20 times the number of people that showed up for his actual inauguration. So I don't think so. <laughs> All right. That's my time. I'm Yale. Good evening. Oh, thank you, Yale. And thank you for your time because my timer stopped. Uh, one second into your set. <laughs> I make time stop. Great. I make time stand still. Maybe so. Maybe that, or maybe maybe the timer heard your first punchline. I don't know. Whatever. Everybody's a critic. Oh, so you're saying there was a punchline? Thank you, Mike. That's the oh. kindest thing you've ever said. Get along with you now. Um, all right. So anyway, that's what I'm doing. You were uh, you were funny, man. You're funny. Thanks. He's a lawyer too, by the way, so you can sue him if you want. Um, if you didn't oh, think nice. he was stuck with good this year, um, you can't sue Jerry because that goes across uh, national lines. You need somebody who's uh, chartered to uh, practice in that if you wanted to sue. Mike, what the hell do you know about law? <laughs> oh, wait, never mind. Yeah, just, now I remember. 
just what I learned <laughs> in law school. Nothing oh, else. That. that and the practicing of law. I see. Okay. Just what I learned when I was a contracts attorney for Paramount Pictures in Los Angeles. Ever heard of it, Los Angeles? Uh, no. <laughs> but they've heard of me. Uh, yeah, they certainly have. That's that's why you don't live there anymore, isn't it? Um, so uh, you know our next performer. Who is our next performer, anyway? Is it you? Is it you, Ned? I no. I wouldn't know. I'm not in charge of this. Who's Lipsky? Hey, but there's a con we have a chat thing that you can check. Bruce Lipsky's our next guy. And okay, sweet. And I remember that even before I looked it up. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, Bruce. So I'm really sorry that I fucked it up. And then, uh, and I think you you owe him extra laughs, both because of that and because I made him follow Yale. So please welcome Bruce Lipsky. Thank you. Thank you. But for that lack of respect, I could have stayed upstairs in my living room. Thank you very much. <laughs> You live with my wife? Oh, my God. Oh, yes. You know, uh, eight months ago, I tested positive for the COVID virus. And I uh, just recently had my antibodies checked. 7.1. The normal is 1.4. I'm like the Superman of antibodies. In fact, I'm probably the sexiest man in New York City right now. <laughs> Playboy, I wants to, Playboy wants to do a spread on me. Maybe that's the wrong word to use over here. But I can love... <laughs> I can go up to any woman right now and say 7.1. Not inches, but antibody units. <laughs> I'm like the Ron Jeremy of antibodies, but it's, it's amazing. But the problem is because I had tested positive for COVID, I had a quarantine. And while you're quarantined, we couldn't have sex, my wife and I. But she kept a passion alive. She took one of her Victoria's Secret black lace bras and cut it up and made masks out of them. <laughs> Thankfully, she's a double D or else it would have never fit over my nose. <laughs> <laughs> but the need for, <laughs> in order to really take care of her, you should have seen what I did with my athletic support. <laughs> it, it, but during this COVID situation, we couldn't go shopping. So what I wound up doing is calling my local supermarket and they had a delivery service. The problem is they kept on running out of food. You know, I have no problem if they substitute a zucchini for an eggplant or <laughs> rye for whole wheat. But how do you go from Colgate to Preparation H? Oh. Even my dog had it supper. He went from the science side to my wife's cooking. <laughs> he took one sniff, rolled on his back, and played dead. <laughs> and I've been trying to teach him that trick for three years. I tell you. But before all this, my wife used to do all the shopping, which is a mistake. I used to say, honey, I need a regular peanut butter. She got chunky style. I said, I want regular orange juice. She got orange juice with pulp. I said, honey, I need Ben Gay. She brought home Ben the bag boy. Uh, uh. But when she asked me to pick up tartar control toothpaste, I gave her my preparation H. Because she's always chewing my ass out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. And before, before I met my wife, I dated a lot of women. I even dated a very famous TV weather person. But the first time we got intimate, it was like a bad winter forecast. She was predicting 10 to 12, and all she got was two to four. <laughs> and man, was she angry. Now I know why they named hurricanes after women. Huh. But during this pandemic, my wife has gone crazy. Nonstop shopping with Amazon. We get so many packages, they just rezone my front porch as a loading dock. The boxes <laughs> are stacked up to the roof. Every day, I think I'm playing a game of Jenga for Giants. Ah. Uh. And I'm going from the front porch to the living room to the bedroom. I feel like her personal delivery monkey, her Amazon primate. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and my birthday's coming up. So my wife said, Bruce, what would you like? I want to get you something online. I said, how about a forklift? <laughs> I'm getting a bigger house. And I'm worried. I think she's having an affair with the UPS guy. She's constantly going on and on, bragging about how big his package is. And now what really worries me, now she only wants backdoor delivery. Uh. I know what Brown's doing for her, but what's it doing for me? <laughs> Next thing she says, I want to get into fantasy role play. She has me dress up in brown shorts, construction boots, and carry a clipboard. <laughs> Anytime I want to have sex, I got to sign for it. And this is making my family life miserable. The only smiles in my house now are the ones in the boxes. 
Well, we really love doing things together, my wife and I. Broadway shows, nice dinners, the UPS guy. <laughs> <laughs> and my wife is into fitness. She takes goat yoga. She finds it very therapeutic and relaxing, especially when the goat jumps on her back and licks her ears. I said, wait a second. I tried that last week. You slapped me and threw me out of bed. And now you're paying a goat to do it. She said, well, he's got great technique and fresh breath. Oh, I said, did he allow kids in the class? She said, no, they only have adult goats. <laughs> and one last thing, I'm into fitness now. I've just turned 65. You get old, you got to stay in shape. But I only exercise late at night between the hours of three and five in the morning. I run, I run sprints from my bedroom to the bathroom. And I got my time down under six seconds. But the problem is I could only hold my pee for 4.2. That's my time. Thank you very much. Very welcome, Bruce Lipsky. Bruce Lipsky. Thank you. About time. Uh, yeah, you might want to check with some of your younger friends about what eating my ass out means today. <laughs> <laughs> um, Chewing my ass off. Chewing, yes. Chewing your ass off. Well, I'm, all I'm saying is... Different thing. There's a possibility... Different, different thing. ...be speaking a little bit unclearly to some of your audience. That's all I'm saying. Uh, 30 years of marriage. That's what will do it to you. <laughs> hey, I stopped, lift, I stopped listening after 20. Um, anyway, it's all right. It's, it's fine. It's fine. I'm, I'm happy I'm married. I'm glad I'm married. <laughs> right. I am. It's a lovely, lovely relationship. My wife and I just do really well together. She's delightful. Um, and I'm married, Bruce, like you, I'm married to a Jewish woman because uh, I figured, what the hell? <laughs> I was tired of all that sex anyway. <laughs> oh, no, come on. Why do I do this? Suddenly I'm fucking some guy from the 50s on television. What? 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 Anyway. What's his name? Rip, Rip. What? What was Rip's? The guy who threw green beans. Rip Torn. Rip Taylor. Rip Taylor. Rip Taylor was the one who threw no. Fanny. Yeah. Rip Torn was the Emmy, the fabulous Emmy-winning actor, whose actual real nick, her last name is Torn, and real nickname was Rip. A lot of people don't know that. Rock Hudson's um, first name was not Rock, and his last name wasn't Hudson. Uh, why? What am I doing? What was it like to do your first talking? What, what was it? <laughs> I, I, I really don't know what his name was. Um, so Rock Hudson's life was just a big joke? A big lie? <laughs> yeah, it was. There were a lot of things about Rock that he didn't really come clean about until late. Name one. Oh, wait. <laughs> now I remember. His marriage was a sham. A sham, I tell you. It was a cheap facade. <laughs> Yeah, all these, somebody somebody back in the 80s when I was doing stand-up the first time said, all these years, all these years we thought Rock was Macmillan. Um, <laughs> oh. Oh. That is a good joke. My That's God. good. Ouch, Deep my cut. God. Larry Amorose, for those of you who were there in New York at the time. Mm. Oh, that guy was hilarious. Be that as it may, um, our next performer has been a friend of mine. Have you been a friend of mine? Uh, yeah. We've known each other for 30 years, Mike. We've been friends for about two, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> spread out. Really spread out when you think oh, about it. Oh, yeah. Not it wasn't, two, it wasn't two years in a row. Oh, nobody said anything the last Jessica, two years in a row, Mike. Jessica. Oh, uh, Jerry Hodges is saying he's got to go. Uh, please check in the chat. Yeah. His, Instagram, Thanks, Jerry. his Instagram handle is in there. Follow him on Instagram. Find out about his mic. Do his mic and uh, enjoy him as a stand-up as well. He's, he brings so us... Our, right. our feud continues. Everyone. Okay, fine. <laughs> fine, Jerry, fine. That's just fine. Uh-huh. If you can live with that, I can. Yeah, he says that he has to go and do uh, a show that he does says, not Ned's mic. I don't know what that <laughs> is. <laughs> that is a damn good show, <laughs> let me say. Yeah, well, it's... It's a winner. I don't no, know, no dead air in that but show. I do know it's not as bad as it could have been. Okay, um, so fine, we'll go with that. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is I love you. And I know that wow. the, the audience is going to love you too. I, not in, not in a creepy way. Well, in a kind of a creepy way, but not in a way. A little bit, a little bit. No, it's not your humor that I love. 
No, see, that oh, doesn't okay. right either. Damn. Anyway, please welcome, if you will, Ned Rice. Ned Rice, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Mike. How about a big hand for Mike Langworthy? How about a big hand for okay, you. that's enough. Settle down. Settle down. Easy. Easy. It's not about Mike now. This is not Mike time. Uh, you know, Mike was, uh, people are trashing Wonder Woman 84. Uh, you know, they say they're not writing good roles for women anymore. I beg your pardon. Uh, if that's not empowering, that shitty ass movie, um, I, honestly, I, if you like that movie, you might have COVID because you've lost your sense of smell. That's yeah. my, that is my message to you, the viewer. So um, a little upsetting today. I guess you probably heard about Alec Baldwin's wife. Um, oh. May have stretched the truth a little bit about growing up in Spain and so on. Uh, so I called her up uh, to just to buck her up a little bit. I had to press one for English, and that's not appropriate. <laughs> that's not okay. That's not. A, but luckily, Alec is a very even-tempered chap. I, I'm, I'm sure he won't <laughs> try to kill anyone over this. Probably uh, uh, he might call his daughter a pig again. But I think that's as, probably as far as he'd go with this. I. Uh, I'm, I'm confident about that. So the holidays are almost over, thank God. Uh, I've been spending lots of time with my family, or I, I should say that the, uh, the uh, CIA replicants who are posing as my family, these people are not related to me. I'm not related to them. There's no possibility that I'm in any way, uh, I'm, you've heard of paternity suits. I'm contesting my father's paternity and my mother's maternity in court. There's, there's got to be a way I can get out of this legally. Um, some kind of mix-up took place, a, an adoption went awry. My older brother is teaching a Facebook masterclass on bitterness. That's, that's the kind of people we're talking about here. Yes, it's quiet in here. I know you, some of these words are hitting home. I understand that. That's fine. <laughs> Maintain the silence. That means that, that gives me more than you can imagine. I, uh, <laughs> the only one of my family I can even tolerate anymore is my mom. My mom is 94 years old. She's a black, she's hilarious. She's active. She's very, young, very young at heart. Well, okay, my mother's a cutter. That's the thing. She's a, <laughs> and I'm like, mom, what are, you, what are you doing? What is that cut on your, she goes, what? She's trying to hide it. I go, right next to your Zeppelin tattoo. What is that fucking, what is that scar? What are you doing? Stop it already. So, but you know, give her, you know, God love her. I, uh, but you know, you go through uh, milestones with an aging parent, you know, the day they kind of don't drive anymore, the day they need to use a walker and so on. I realized this week, my mother is like a foot shorter than she was when I was growing up because people get, you know, they shrink. I realized maybe another inch, inch and a half of shrinkage my mother will be too short to ride most roller coasters. So, you know, we'll, we'll, when we get to that bridge, we'll cross it. It's going to be okay. But that's what's uh, staring us in the face. That's what's happening. Um, I still, I'm still dating my girlfriend, uh, my millennial girlfriend, because uh, I'm kind of creep. And uh, that's what I like. If I was a bucket of KFC chicken, I'd be extra creepy. That's who I am. That's what I do. Uh, my girlfriend is an absolute doll. She's literally a doll. I mean, she's one of those. She's one of those Teflon and, and aluminum dolls. You could buy those love dolls. Uh, I'm just kidding. No, my girlfriend is a real person. Obviously, a human being. Who would want a girlfriend that couldn't talk, right? No, that's a terrible idea, Mike. How could you say such a thing? That's terrible. My girlfriend is so wonderful. She only has one flaw. She's a perfectionist. If it wasn't for that, she'd be perfect. So what is, that's, uh, what is her flaw? I stepped on your punchline. Her only flaw is that she's a perfectionist, Mike. Uh, but thank you. Thank you for emptying your bowels on my soul. Because that's what I do here. This is about my soul. Thanks for doing that. I'm sorry. Again, the silence has, has, has taken over the room. That's good. I like that. That I can work with that. Yeah. Well, four minutes, so hell. I, uh, what else was well, I going here? Going as long as you want, because I fucked you up, man. I did. Seriously? Oh shit! And, and, well, you know, I get so I much. I told everybody so you were going to do jokes, so I totally fucked you up. Whoa, <laughs> officer, down, Mike. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I get so much from my girlfriend. I get so much emotional support and romance and intellectual. But mostly, what I get from my millennial girlfriend is tech support, and uh, <laughs> because that's how it is. I'm old. I don't know how these things work. We both got new phones. The new iPhone is out this week. We both got them. And she has 
these things on her phone called widgets. Have we heard this? Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a quick way to like, like when she, you know, she just checks her phone super quick and it's the weather, screen time, battery, calendar, and of course her period tracker. And uh, on my phone, there's a weather, screen time, sports scores, um, and my girlfriend's period tracker. So we both have that. <laughs> See that? Boy, you have it, I, you have I, it in I, common. I, Sorry, what? what? You have it in common is what you're saying. Oh, that's a, that's just one of the many things we have in common, Mike. We both dislike you and uh, we both like soup. So, I mean, really it's a match made in heaven. No, I'm just kidding, Mike. Uh, she, she likes you. Uh, I think maybe we'll call it a day there. Thank you so much for listening. Oh, Goodbye. Don't, don't, don't Goodbye. stop. Don't stop. Huh? No. No, Mike, right. you brought me down. You brought me down. You spoiled it. And I'm, and I'm, you know, I'm going to pout for a while. All right. Okay. No, that was fun. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. No, thank you, Ned. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> Ned is, uh, he's special, is, is Ned. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh no, no, no. Ned's been very, he's been a professional writer for a long time. And um, what happened? Uh, what happened? <laughs> I don't believe, I don't know what happened. I think radio came in. Think that's uh, oh shit! Um, oh yeah, you have a millennial girlfriend. Wow, mm. it's crazy. Where did you meet her? At some crosstown bar. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I met her at a bar. I, I, I believe that. So, at lunchtime. It was it wasn't a school night. No, of course not. It wasn't a school night. Come on, come on now. Why would she? Why would she be in a bar on a school night? That's crazy. No, she was probably a driver's ed. Um, the, uh, so our next performer, um, she's in that wheelhouse. You might, you know, if, if things don't work out with uh, your current girlfriend. Oh, okay. Which, that, yeah, that's that's a good idea. You may want to <laughs> we'll, uh, give Emily a tumble. She's uh, delightful. You know, she can hear you, right? Yeah. Right now. She can yeah. Hear you talk. Uh, he's it's presenting okay. me much better than I could. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. you know, Ned, Ned just comes back at me like I'm being mean to him, but what I'm really doing is building him up. So this is a resume. Yes, and yes, that's exactly how you do improv. Um. Anyways, uh, it's Emily Cornelius, who's uh, she's a member of the Colorado Comedy Show's family that uh, Chuck Rowe and uh, mm. Chuck Roy too. Both of them host it. Uh, Chuck mm -hmm. Rowe, of course, is married to the woman of um, abortion fame. And Chuck oh, no. <laughs> I think he's her daughter. I think he's her son. Um, the one that no. made it. No, he's, yeah. he's not. They, they, got the, uh, they got the order into the court just in time. And the anyway, man who got away. <laughs> you, you, always, you always worry about the ones who got away. Um, so... Um, we're going to be doing a, there's a comedy team called Plessy, Plessy and Ferguson are coming in. Um, <laughs> and Sacco and Ben Zetti are opening for them. A few, uh, Emily, how's your intro going? So, Sacco and <laughs> Betty were here one. Sacco and Betty were here on our opening show and they died. They just died. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, he's just introducing me better than I could do myself. They were following, so awesome. they were supposed to follow the Rosenberg. It's going to be a long five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> died. Tune in next week for the rest of Emily's introduction. <laughs> yeah. Can I get a transcript? I try to set the timer before I start the introduction, and when it when it beeps, then I say, "What is that? A fucking is Fisher the, Price timer? What? Let's see that timer again." Is the timer for your introduction or for her set? <laughs> like, is that for my multiplication tables? It's a Fisher Price. It's a That's Fisher Price saying. timer, like Ned said. <laughs> I got it from the 80s, just like you got that joke. Um, do you get put in time out a lot? I'm going to say, yes, we do. Um, I am going to bring uh, Emily Cornelius on without any further fondue. Please uh, welcome. Hey. Emily hey. Cornelius. Hey. Emily. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the end of the end. Um, I want to use my time as a bit of a time capsule for the year I turned 25 this year. 
So I want to remember this time of my life. This is kind of a letter to the future. And, you know, we're recording this in unprecedented times. Maybe in a hundred years, they'll use this show to uh, demonstrate how bad technology was. Or, <laughs> you know, we're comedians. Maybe one of us will get big. Um, or uh, me too, somebody. <laughs> Ned Rice, um, oh. Ned Rice tells us he's creepy, um, oh. so it's probably not him, no. um, unless he's legally obligated to do so. <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Um, so I turned 25 this year, um, but I've got I've got a whole sack of cards, so I've got more things. 24 as in 2024, the next year that Trump will run and lose for president. Um, Cause you know, he's gonna try that again. Or as maybe I more fondly remember it, 24, July 24th, 2020, the day that Taylor Swift released folklore spelled with no capital letters. <laughs> mm. Heavy. 23. Yeah. 23 is uh, the amount of orders that I placed on Amazon this year. I did count. 22, uh, Taylor, uh, it's, it's a song that wasn't released in 2020, but I don't know about you, but I'm feeling uh, that 21 is the new age to buy tobacco products. You remember when you could just take a nickel from your mother and go down to the five and dime and buy her a pack of uh, Marlboros with the filters cut off? No, yeah. just me? <laughs> um, I'm 25. Nothing cost a nickel when I was alive. All right, so <laughs> 21. We, so we've got number 20. 20, the amount of Instagram posts that I made this year. Follow me at Emily is corny. Yes, like the vegetable and my jokes. And you'll see photo evidence that it is possible to be both boring and annoying. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Let me influence you. Who knows? Maybe I'll delete one and make it 19. 19, or how old Taylor Swift was during the Kanye incident. You know, he ran for president of the United States and people voted for him. Maybe they're right about election fraud. Maybe the votes are fake. But, you know, he interrupted her in that speech. Uh, yes, he, he interrupted her in that speech. It was a song that she wrote when she was 18. 18 years old. What was I doing when I was 18? I still thought I was going to finish college back then. <laughs> a lot of comedians uh, grow out of that. So that's good for me. Um, but let's go back to 17. What was happening 17 years ago? It was 2003. The birds were chirping. R. Kelly's Ignition remix was playing. Um, too bad that we didn't know that his age minimum or excuse me, age maximum was 16. 16 <laughs> songs on Taylor Swift's album, Folklore, released July 24th, 2020. Not to be confused with the 15 songs uh, on Taylor Swift's second album of the year, Evermore. No capital letters as well. 14, the prime demographic for all of my Taylor Swift material. Does anyone have a spare niece? Ned, do you know anybody? Um, oh, she's not 14, she's 13. Um, 13, the musical that Ariana Grande had her Broadway debut in 2008 when I was 12. That's right, I hadn't even gotten my first period and that bitch was tap dancing her way to the top. She's smart, I'll give her that. She announced her engagement the same day as she released a concert on Netflix. That was a big release, a big release, but not as big as December 11th, 2020, the day that Taylor Swift released her second album of the year, Evermore, spelled with no capital letters. And there are a lot of fan theories. I'm gonna keep going, I'm sorry I'm over time. 
Um, I am introducing oh, myself great. as well as Mike did. Uh, so, I think December we 11th, Taylor Swift released her second album of the year, Evermore. Zero capital letters. We hate them. E.E. E. Cummings all over that bitch. <laughs> but there's a lot of fan theories about T. Swizzle. And with uh, this album specifically, with Evermore, I think there are 10 songs that prove she is a lesbian or bisexual, or at least like sapphic adjacent. She's something, look it up. I'm not the only one. There are dozens of us. <laughs> we all think that she's into the ladies. And anybody with enough time to learn an instrument or be good at anything when they're a child mm -hmm. is repressed. Things are repressed. You want to do stuff. And maybe it makes sense why she couldn't make it work with so many of those guys. Uh -huh. And... You know, she dated Harry Styles. Yeah. Lesbians love Harry Styles. Yeah. I, heard I just searched back together, though. Um, <laughs> no, uh, but there are going to be some teardrops on my guitar later. I did have to go through nine exes to find one that lesbians were super about. Um, and counting her current one, that's 10 boyfriends. That's not too bad. Um, 10 boyfriends since 2008. Hmm. Mm. yeah that that was a stretch but you know 10 people's in 12 years that's an okay track record I mean 10 men at least I'm still not giving up hope on her being into girls she does have a song called seven um that has the line hide in the closet shall we say <laughs> or maybe um whatever you're into. Maybe you're not a Taylor Swift fan. She writes a lot of love songs. I'll mm -hmm. give you that. But every comedian in here would tell Tinder jokes all day if it made them six figures. <laughs> no. <laughs> because that's what love did for her. Her net worth is $365 million. That's a million dollars for every day. I don't even know what I would do with that much money. Like I, I got a package the other day. Didn't remember ordering anything. I don't have a ton of extra money. And I remembered, oh, I made a drunk purchase. What was it? What was my drunk purchase? A set of four diva cups. <laughs> <laughs> That's not fun. What was I doing? What, where was my brain? When parties are legal to have again, please don't invite me. Okay. Um, but we're lucky that won't happen <laughs> until at least three to seven months from now um, when it's legal to do that again. Two albums that Taylor Swift released, Folklore and Evermore in 2020. On July 24th, 2020 and December 11th, 2020, Folklore and Evermore zero capital letters <laughs> um, and one stimulus check that our government was able to just muster up couldn't couldn't work as hard as taylor um and zero dollars <laughs> going into my pocket for saying her name this many times and uh you know maybe maybe <laughs> i should have finished college yeah sure Maybe you should have. I would know uh, more things than just You'd Taylor Swift. You probably would know more than 25 <laughs> things. That's true. Um, um, I'm going to get Thank you, you yeah, for being you, so kind to me. <laughs> to, uh, okay. Um, so uh, Emily's going to be going into her set in a couple of minutes. Um, <laughs> in the meantime, I want to know if Chuck Roy, our fabulous producer, is going to talk about anything uh, comedically related tonight because he said that he might want to share a few thoughts with you. You know, I was thinking about uh, talking about some of the things about uh, new country music that I don't like, but I think you handled uh, the whole music arena with your Taylor Swift references. So I don't feel as though I'm <laughs> obligated to go into that. Chuck, what are what's your you Mike, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, appreciate you. How about it for Mike Langworthy, your host? Thank you. For a good portion of the evening, he was a host. 
Uh, Whoa. Mike, uh, it's New Year's, and yeah. on New Year's, I like to think back to, uh, on New Year's Eve, I went on my first date. And we're having a big comedy show uh, on New Year's Eve. General admission tickets sold out. Uh, super fun night. And um, it, 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 if I think it was 1987, um, there was a lot that I didn't know about dating. Um, there was a lot um, he didn't know about dating. Um, There's just a lot we didn't know. Um, it was uh, New Year's Eve and my friend was taking me to a concert um, and he showed up at my parents' house to pick me up and he's wearing, a, it's gotta be a 1987 and the show Miami Vice was the big hit of the time. And my friend showed up wearing the Don Johnson look. He, he had a white blazer on, uh, white pants and a pink shirt. Yeah, white on white to a New Year's Eve concert. Um, that is well after Labor Day. Tell me, that guy didn't really know he was gay. Um, mm. No, sh he had shoes on, but no socks, Mike. That was the big mm. deal. Like, as he steps into my house, my dad's like, he's not wearing any socks. Because uh, we live free or die in New Hampshire. That's our state motto. But we do that in a pair of socks. That's uh, and it's the no socks thing that really just comes into play. This is embarrassing. This is uh, the concert. We get to the concert. We're about to take our seats. The concert's about to start. Uh, my friend sits down, and his pant leg goes up, revealing just a little bit of his bare ankle. And I chub up. I'm like whoop woof, uh, and then. <laughs> Done. Like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Uh, like, am I gay uh, over an ankle? Uh, um, am I really gay? Uh, and then the lights of the stadium go out, and the announcer goes, Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome new kids on the block. <laughs> then, then you that's know. when you know you're gay. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Well, that's my piece. I that's my piece for today. A Mike. lot of that conversation for you, Chuck. I have to tell you, you know, if you had just you had just told me I'm going to a New Kids on the Block concert with my friend Bill. Right. Um, I could have really, I could settle, I could have settled some bets probably, and um, also just made your life a little clearer a little earlier. If, yes. If we had only known each other at that time. Right. You know? So. Well, you know, Mike, uh, I'm lucky I know you now. Yeah, well, <laughs> everyone on this, I've, I've got, got gallery view on looking at 12 very lucky people right now. <laughs> right. With all these people, we should do a comedy show. Uh, we're, th we're, we're three <laughs> short. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. Come on. You guys were funny tonight. This well, is a lovely show, you know? I hope Carol, Cynthia, and Rob enjoyed their time on our show, uh, uh, in, uh, seeing a terrific lineup of comedians from around the world. I had a little... Plus uh, Ned Rice. A little private what? chat with Cynthia. With, 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 I heard that. I'm sorry, what? I was listening oh, a to the comedy show plus Ned Rice. Yeah, that's that's good. Hey, you know what? You know, Ned is, Ned is dating a millennial... That came from a hurtful place. Yeah. His... <laughs> <laughs> well, love is a hurting thing. Ned. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. You realize it. Um, the sooner you'll be able to uh, memorize the oeuvre of Nazareth. Um... Uh, I'm sorry, Ned. I'm 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 cold-hearted, Ned. Um, yes. In fact, I'm I'm it's subbing. Who you my... are? It's what you're about. I'm subbing my cold heart out to store the Pfizer vaccine. Oh, yep. it must be below zero. <laughs> yeah, he's got a very, very cold heart. There's no question about it. As I was trying to say, though, uh, I had a little private, I had a little private chat with Cynthia Shelby Lane, and she was delightful. And we share excellent taste in movies, the two of us. I can just say that much. 
much. So Cynthia uh, also didn't enjoy. And she it. works for Carol Hayes Camp. Works for Pfizer. So thank you. you're a hero, Carol. You Way are to go, Carol. Should we clap for Carol? We I should clap like for Carol. <laughs> Carol. <laughs> what an incredible set. Yeah. I am Pfizer. Using us all night. Am I right, people? High five, anybody? <laughs> you know. us? I'm pushing things up. You said yeah. she had a, she had an incredible set. <laughs> the funniest man in 1989. Um, Whoa! Oh, come on. Why would I even say a thing like that? Anyway, we I have a lovely so time. Mad. Bruce Lipsky, Emily Cornelius, Jeff Cohen, Chuck Roy, Yale Hall, Jessica Misra, hey. Glenn Williams, the late Jerry Hodges. Um, <laughs> Um, I don't know what Ziglin signs mean, but I like it. Rob Bergner, thank you for coming. Carol Hayescamp, thank you for coming. Cynthia, thank you for coming. Tell your friends. Come often. It's every Monday. It starts at 8, and I don't always yammer like this. Sometimes I'm funny. All right. So that's it, Chuck. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody.